In this video, I'm going to show you some of my handmade tools because I just think it's really, really fun to be innovative and creative when it comes to our tools. We're certainly that way when we paint, and our tools really are kind of a reflection of all those things that we think of, um, you know, all the things that might make a different kind of a mark, whatever kinds of things you're interested in. So I wanted to show you some of the tools that I've made um, over the past you know, couple of years. I did, I did make some of these for a master class one time. And also the, um, uh, the way that a lot of times I'll get an idea is just like you going to a thrift store and seeing like a rolling pin like this. And these bands here are made of neoprene. And I will definitely list where I got all these materials and you know how I did them so that you don't have any question about um, how to do this particular thing. Um, this happened to be adhesive neoprene, so that's good, but I didn't just want to rely on the adhesive of the neoprene because I figured, you know, the more I use these in time, I didn't want this neoprene to start peeling off. So I'll show you an extra step that I did just to make sure that the neoprene did not come undone. So here's a rolling pin, and here's another rolling pin. Um, this one, I don't know, wasn't quite as successful. I actually went to the hardware store and bought some of these. Um, it's, it's adhesive, and I think it's used like under furniture. It's kind of like um, flexible, it's, it's mushy, but then I, I cut them out and then I stuck them onto this is another rolling pin that I had, and I then went over it again with um, polyurethane, which again, I'll show you that process. This one was formerly a lint roller. I left the lint roller tape on here, and I just uh, took some interesting texture. You can take any texture that you like, but in this case, it's kind of like string going in both directions, so I kind of like that texture. And then it's just a bigger roller than you know what you would normally be able to find. So that's another example. And then here are some other tools that I've made, which are kind of fun because in this case, as you can see, they're these double-ended pastry rollers. And you can see how you can vary the stripes if you want stripes. But you can also cut out little things out of neoprene and stick them on there. And that's what I'm going to show you today is kind of how I made these tools. Here's the other one that I made. It's got the stripes and you know then it has this kind of texture on the end so just really fun and you know you can use these in the cold wax medium you can you can also use them in other mediums like probably acrylic would work to a certain extent it you know again it you never quite know what's going to happen with these and that's kind of the fun of it so how did i make these i started out with this i thought it was kind of cool and i don't know it might have been about six dollars it's made by norpro and it's all wood. And again, I will give you all the information you need as to where to find it so that if you want to do this, you can also do it. All right, so this pastry roller is made of raw wood. And I have this, which is um, the polyurethane. It's satin finish, not that that matters. Uh, Verethane happens to be the brand. It is a water-based and clear polyurethane and what I, the, the reason I use this is just to seal that raw wood. When you stir this up you want to stir it really gently. You don't want to create air bubbles because this may not be the only thing you're using your polyurethane for. Um, I used to use this when doing collagraphs which just is a form of printmaking and you know we did use this polyurethane as well for that process but it looks can you see how it kind of looks like glue it's um, very thin but just stir it up a little bit and when it dries it will be clear and because it's water-based and kind of like an acrylic at least that's the way I look at it it'll dry quickly Okay, I'll set that aside. What I did for this particular pastry roller is I kind of wanted to know, you know, what is the, the full circumference of, you see on the end, it's a circle, right? And um, to go all the way around that circle is a certain length. That's called the circumference. And then we've got the width here. So I wanted those measurements so that I could cut my neoprene to match, you know, this uh, diameter here. And then on this end, you know, we've got a different story probably the same, I think that was the same circumference, but I think, you know, this width was less. So that is a different measurement, and I just happened to write them down. I have my little cutting mat here, 
And what I'm going to do is get out my neoprene. And here's the neoprene. This is how it comes. It's got a yellow backing paper and it's black. But you know what neoprene is like. They make the wetsuits out of it and that kind of thing. This happens to be adhesive. So I'm just going to cut out a little chunk that measures four and an eighth by three and seven eighths because that is what I measured the roller to be. It's easier to mark it on the back, actually. It's nice because it's really just paper on the back here. It helps to be kind of exact only because otherwise you have things that are going to stick off the end of your pastry roller and those things in time can get worn out and so I just figured, you know, if I'm going to do this, I might as well <laughs> might as well match it to the actual size of the pastry roller. And also, this neoprene is slightly stretchy. You'll see. All right. So now, just cut that out with a pair of scissors. It's very easy to cut. It's just like fabric. I've had the same roll for a long time. So I'm cutting through this adhesive backing, which is the yellow part. And the fun part really is, well, what do you want to do with them? You know, you can see how that pretty much matches up with the width. And then as far as the diameter goes, I can kind of just show you what's going to happen when I take off that adhesive. It's going to match up like this. Pretty close, right? And again, the neoprene is a little bit stretchy. So um, once I get this on here, then I can, I'll show you the next step. But what you want to do now that you have these two pieces of neoprene is just kind of have fun. What kind of a design do you want on there? Again, this is where you can do anything that you want. I will mark though that this particular one, you know, does go in this direction, right? Just so I don't get confused because because this is almost like that and I don't want to um, forget that that's the direction it's going. So um, you can be really, you know, super creative or you can be really simple. It's whatever you want. But I usually just start cutting into the neoprene. I've got a sharp blade here and this is pretty easy to cut. Let's make sure you have a sharp blade. That's always important. And then, you know, when you pull these pieces out, these, these pieces can actually be saved Maybe I'll use these on the small one or, you know, maybe you'll use them somewhere else. But I do like to set up patterns. So I'm looking at this and I've got a stripe. Maybe I'll do another stripe. Maybe I'll vary how wide the next one is. Okay, there's that. I'll go back to skinny again. I can, I can vary the distance between the stripes. Maybe I'll just keep cutting away here. Here's a wider stripe. Maybe I'll put just a kind of a suggestion of a curve in here too. I would save all your scraps and neoprene because you never know when they're going to come in handy. Let's cut these off like that. And then this one on the end had a bit of a curve to it. So snip that off. Okay, so this one is going to be for the big roller. As you can see, it matches up with the width. Um, I'll set that one aside. And then this little guy, um, again, I, I could either take, you know, these scraps and instead of using this, I don't have to use this. I could actually say, well, I don't know, maybe I want to just use these little scraps on here. Maybe I will do that just so that you can see. Uh, it's whatever, whatever you feel like doing. So maybe... You know, you start to cut this into pieces, all different lengths like that. And the adhesive on the back, you peel off that yellow paper and it's sticky here on this side. Okay. And so then you just start to stick these onto the raw wood and they do stretch a little bit. You can stretch them if you want to, but you see how they, they just really stick. They stick really well to the wood. And then I'll take this little one and I'll just very randomly stick it on there. And I've got a longer one here and so now I'm gonna you can see how you can see how it sticks to the wood and you can also can you see how it kind of stretches <laughs> pretty stretchy. All right so then 
I start to tack this on, and then I've introduced a curve just by the fact that it's so flexible like that. And you keep putting on as much as you want. You can stop at any time. One here. And maybe I'll put one. I can actually butt these two up against one another. And now I've got a shape on there too. So I've got kind of shape and line going on this one, you can see. And now I will put this piece onto the larger roller. So again, peel the yellow part off. This is the sticky side. And if, you know, it's not like you can't reposition it once you start to put it onto your roller. It's pretty forgiving. So I line it up like this. I really don't want to stretch it. I'm going to try not to stretch it, I should say. I mean, it, it's kind of hard not to in some ways because it's a very flexible fabric. But, okay, let go. Um, I'm just very gently going to let this thing fall into place, okay? So you can see it from the side. I'm just letting it fall into place. And I'm just pressing it down as we go. Now here I see that this, this one here, I want a little bit more of a gap so I can reposition that just by lifting it a little bit. This is where the flexibility is kind of nice because I can determine, you know, just what kind of a stripe I want there. But then kind of lay that down. It's a little challenging because it is sticky, but um, again, it's very forgiving. Now I get to this joint where the two edges meet and this is the part where I might stretch just a little bit to get that to really line up. I don't want them to overlap. I want them to be kind of just a really nice joint here. I could also leave a gap if I wanted to, but I'm at this, at this time, I'm just going to kind of line them up like that. And just because it is stretchy, you know, it's not going to be exactly how you may have cut it out. This is the one where I had the curve in there. And then you really want to just press it down every place where there's neoprene. Make sure that there's a good uh, adhesion between the neoprene and the wood. Okay. And then in this case, yeah, I see I had a little bit stretched, so I can just take my pair of scissors. You can see a little bit of overlap here. I'm just going to trim it. I think it'll be neater that way. And mostly for the purpose of it just lasting longer. I don't want a lot of neoprene hanging off the edge. Okay. Do the same thing on this. Okay. So then just keep, you know, squishing it down with your hand. All right, that's pretty good. So then, you know, you might think, well, isn't that good enough? And it might have been, but um, I guess when I first started doing this, I decided to do one additional step with these rollers on the, given that it is a, it's wood and, and I didn't know how strong that adhesive would be. So I essentially took this polyurethane, stir it again. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna go on top of the neoprene, go over the wood, and it's just gonna seal the wood. Because as you know, when you paint with cold wax and oil or acrylic or any other medium, um, the neoprene itself is actually porous. And so I guess I thought about doing this because I wanted to make it kind of easy to wipe off, go from one color to the next. So now you can see it's whitish at first because it is, again, water-based, just like acrylic. And I'm going over the neoprene, I'm going over the wood. I'm sealing in the wood and I'm also making it so that the neoprene is no longer porous. And that way I'll actually be able to, you know, clean it if I want to. And because I cut out of the neoprene, you can see how, um, you can see how the polyurethane kind of collects in here. And, and I, you know, if you want that, great. If you don't, then just try to be a little careful to pick up that excess. I do the ends as well. So I'm really just sealing all of it. I just wanted, I figured that that would be a good thing to do to keep the neoprene in place. I also let this dry and then I put two more coats on there. So I'm just going to do this one coat so you can see it. And I would just repeat that a couple times, uh, letting it dry 
thoroughly in between. One time I did try a hot glue gun on one of these pastry rollers and I just drizzled some glue onto it and then it cooled and you know it did make an interesting texture but it just didn't work all that well with the cold wax medium so you know I just found the neoprene to work pretty well. I'm sure there are other things, I mean lots of other things, lace, you could uh, attach lace to something like this. You would want to just use a bit of adhesive to secure the lace to the roller. I mean it's kind of endless what you can do with these pastry rollers. Neoprene is just one, one thing you could put on there, but really you can do anything you want. The other thing I'd like to show you is another way to make some tools that allow you to be really free and loose with your mark making. And all you have to do is get some dowel rods, either quarter inch or you could do half inch, whatever you want, and then you cut them to whatever length you want. And uh, they're really a lot of fun to work on, say large scale, large sheets of paper on the floor or on the wall. I've had a lot of fun doing that and I can show you some of those tools. And you just attach any, any kind of brush or altered brush that you want. So basically that's what you want to do is just coat either end about three times uh, letting it dry thoroughly in between and then you've got a brand new tool to play with. So I'll set that here and here's one area where we're going to be doing some fun warm-ups with some innovative tools. They're just attached to these long dowel rods to give a lot of freedom of movement and uh, just to kind of warm up. Um, yeah, this one is a half inch diameter and all you have to do is choose whatever kind of paint application tool you want. Like let's say it's one of these sponge brushes. You can either tape it or you can use zip ties and those work really well. So you just determine where exactly you want to put it on your dowel and then you take your zip tie or your tape and you secure it. So you would just go like this if I use a zip tie, I'll probably, I usually use two of them because otherwise you get a lot of movement there. But anyways, um, with the zip tie, you pull it tight like this. And you can see that's already pretty secure, but it still kind of, it still wobbles a little bit like this. So then I would just put another um, zip tie here. But then you see you've got this nice long rod where you can paint with, and that's really fun. Then you just, you can change the type of thing that you attach to the end of the dowel rod. So here's a kind of a more fancy brush. And then here's just an inexpensive chip brush. One time I took a chip brush like this because they're, they're so inexpensive and I cut some of the bristles out with a razor blade and I just, um, you know, maybe cut out the, the center bristle so that I had just a different shape of brush. So use your imagination and just have a lot of fun with that. And, and I hope that you make your own tools. It's a lot of fun.